Hello students, in this video we'll discuss the singular value decomposition and the Eckhart-Young theorem, which asserts that finite rank approximations arise from singular value decompositions in a natural way. Let's begin. So let's let T map V into W, two finite dimensional inner product spaces. Okay. And of course, we have the singular value decomposition, the SVD, asserts that if I plug in any element, any vector v into t, I can express this as sigma 1, and then the inner product of v with some phi 1 hat, psi 1 hat, all the way down to sigma r, v with phi r hat, psi r hat. And of course, these collections, these singular values and singular, singular vectors are going to be orthogonal sets. And here, of course, we have that sigma 1 bigger than or equal to sigma 2 bigger than or equal to sigma r, which is the rank. And then this is going to be bigger than or equal to sigma r plus 1, which is going to be 0, all the way down to sigma n, which is going to be also 0. So r is the rank over here. And in principle, what can happen is the phi 1 can be extended to phi 1 through phi n. That's an orthonormal basis of v. And then I can have psi 1 through psi m be an orthonormal basis for w. Okay? That's the singular value decomposition. And so now, of course, the important thing to know is that what we can say is the following. We can notice, suppose, let's estimate the norm of this thing. So now note that the norm of T v quantity squared now this is an ortho, uh, these psi 1 through psi m is an orthonormal set, so I can use the Pythagorean theorem. This is going to be sigma 1 squared, and then the absolute value of v with phi 1 squared, all the way down to sigma r squared, and then v with phi r squared. Now, phi 1 through phi r is a subset of the entire of the orthonormal basis phi 1 through phi n, right? And so I can make this larger by replacing all of these coefficients sigma 1 squared through sigma r squared with a sigma 1 squared, because sigma 1 squared is the largest of all of them, right? It, it majorizes all of them. So this is sigma 1 squared, and then I'm just going to throw in all the coefficients over here. So I'm just going to sum j goes from 1 to n of v with phi j hat squared, and that's just the length of force, sigma 1 squared, just the length of v. So we've just shown, we the length of v squared by the Pythagorean theorem, we've just shown that the norm of tv squared is less than or equal to sigma 1 v squared, and so this implies automatically that tv, for any v I want, is less than or equal to sigma 1 times the norm of v. And actually, I can attain this sigma 1 if I plug in, um, if I plug in phi 1, right? And we know that if we plug in phi 1 over here, and t of phi 1 hat is sigma 1 psi 1 hat, and that tells me that the operator norm of t, this says that the operator norm of t is just going to be sigma 1, the first singular value. So in other words, the operator norm of t is the largest singular value. Great. Okay, that's sort of the first basic step for the Eckhart-Young theorem. And so now we can generalize this a little bit. And so I'm going to do is the following. I'm going to define a quantity. I'm going to call this I. Let's call it IL. IL is going to be what? It's going to be the infimum, the smallest. If you don't like infimum, if you're not familiar with the infimum notation, it's just minimum, right? So infimum is something that will generalize to infinite dimensions when you have tools from analysis and functional analysis. So this is going to be, if you don't like infimum, just think of it as minimum, okay? The infimum, or minimum, of all t minus k, such that k is finite rank, and the rank of k is less than or equal to L. This IL, that's what we're going to look at this thing. In other words, this says, what is the closest finite rank approximation to T, right? That will, that will basically, the infimum of this thing is going to be the best finite rank approximation of, of rank less than or equal to L to the operator T, okay? And so our claim is that, so our theorem proposition, and this is the Eckhart-Young theorem, is that IL, 
is equal to sigma L plus one. Great, okay. So let's prove that. So the proof goes as follows. So proof. Well, what I can do is I'm gonna define sort of a truncated version of the singular value composition. I'm gonna look at TL of V. And what will TL of V be? It's gonna be sigma one, V with phi one hat, psi one hat, all the way down to sigma L. And then V with phi L, psi L, okay? Now notice, of course, that the range of TL is just the span of phi one through phi L, right? So the range of TL is the span of phi one hat through phi L hat, and that implies that the rank of TL, the rank of TL is equal to L, right? Great. And so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, it's, I'm gonna plug in this um, K is TL, right? So if I can estimate, now notice of course, when I look at T minus TL, applied to the vector what? I'm gonna apply the vector psi L plus one into this, psi L plus one hat into this thing over here. Actually, we want to plug in phi L plus one rather, so phi L plus one. Those things plug in phi is not size, right? So phi L plus one. Now what's gonna happen over here? Well, all of these inner products, well, first of all, the first L of these terms, so I'm basically gonna subtract off the first L terms in the singular value decomposition, then I'll be left with the L plus first term up to the Rth term over here. Now, I know that phi R all the way down to phi L plus two are all perpendicular to phi L plus one, so this is just gonna output sigma L plus one, and then what? And then psi L plus one, and that tells me the operator norm of this thing over here, so TL, T minus TL, is no more than sigma L plus one, right? Excellent, so I have one inequality over here, so that tells me that my IL is less than or equal to what? So this tells me that IL, IL, is less than or equal to sigma L plus one. Excellent. Now I gotta prove the opposite inequality so that they're equal to each other, right? And so now let me be given an arbitrary, so now given, K finite rank with rank of K less than or equal to L, okay? We know that the set K of phi one hat through K of phi L plus one hat is linearly dependent because there's L plus one things over there. Dependent. Okay, and so that means that there are coefficients that exist b1 through bl plus one, not all zero, such that, such that b1 k phi one hat, all the way down to bl plus one k phi l plus one hat is equal to zero, the zero vector over here, okay? And so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna define a vector, and so the vector we're gonna define is this. So I'm gonna extract information from this, so we're gonna set V, the vector V, just to be B1 phi 1 hat, all the way down to BL plus 1 phi L plus 1 hat, okay? And so now what can I do? So now let's estimate, I'm gonna estimate the norm of T minus K applied to this vector v quantity squared. Well, the whole point is if I plug in v, k of v is just gonna be equal to what? k of this v is equal to zero over here, right? So k of v is equal to zero. So this is just gonna be the norm of t applied to v quantity squared, right? Excellent. And so now what can we say over here? So now we can say, since t of v is equal to zero, we can say now that when I plug in this v, into this expression over here. We're gonna get all of these things. So we're gonna have phi one up through phi L plus one. So this is gonna be equal to B one squared. And then um, phi one with phi one is gonna give me nothing, right? And then sigma one squared plus all the way down to B L plus one squared. 
and then sigma L plus one squared over here, right? And so now the key feature of this is that this is always bigger than or equal to, bigger than or equal to, sigma L plus one, sigma L plus one squared, right? And then times the sum of these B1 squared plus BL squared. But that's at least what? That's at least, th that is exactly the length of this, uh, this dripping now, <laughs> this dripping V over here, right? So this is just the length of V, right? So this is sigma L plus one squared, the length of V quantity squared over there, right? And so now I've found a vector V, so now by canceling these squares over here, I have found a vector V such that T minus KV is bigger than or equal to sigma L plus one. So this shows that the smallest of these things is at least sigma L plus one. So this allows me to conclude from this that the norm of TK is bigger than or equal to sigma L plus one, okay? And so now I have this thing over here for this final error cap, right? We have this inequality over here, and we have this inequality over here. So this tells me that IL is bigger than or equal to sigma L plus one. So we have the IL is bigger than or equal to sigma L plus one, and IL is less than sigma L plus one. So our conclusion of Eckhart Young that IL is sigma L plus one is proven. And this allows me to conclude now the following. So what's the interpretation of this Eckhart Young theorem? The interpretation of this Eckhart Young theorem is that the best finite rank approximation to T is what I get when I truncate the singular value. If I want the best finite rank approximation whose rank is less than or equal to L, then I need to look at the truncated singular value decomposition up to the level of L in terms of the orthonormal basis psi one through psi M. I stop that at psi L in the decomposition, and that gives me the best finite rank approximation of a linear operator. Thank you very much.